Today is uh, Tuesday, February 18th, 2014, meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. I'm William Hargers, the Board of Health representative to the Commission. I'd like to call the meeting to order. What's next, Mary? Uh, next would be announcement of audio video recording. This, this meeting is uh, audio and visually recorded. Next thing is next is election of chair. Yeah. We have next the election of the chair and vice chair. Generally, this begin with a a uh, nomination. I'd like to nominate Councilor Ryan O'Donnell. Second. Is there a Second. We've got to talk about it. Right? Any further discussion? Is there any other I'll say it again. Is there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Thanks, Wayne. I, I, I comment that I'm, I'd be perfectly willing to do it as long as I can rely on the experience and advice of uh, all my great colleagues here. I definitely will need it. But thank you. Starting with the oldest members. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not necessarily by age. <laughs> Longest members. Longest attending members. Uh, now we do vote. Mm -hmm. Can I show by a uh, show of hands? All in favor? Aye. 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 You don't vote. <laughs> I see everybody. We, unanimous. The new chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission and Ryan O'Donnell, Councilor Ryan, Ryan O'Donnell. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now I move my mm -hmm. chair. <laughs> Does he not conduct the, yes. the vice chair? Yes. That's right. Great. I look up to this one. Thank you, Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. I had a good nap. <laughs> She's very tired. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, thank you. This is not an agenda item, but <clears throat> Councillor Klein suggested we do brief introductions. Would that be okay? So we all know who we are. Um, we'll start maybe on the side. Yeah. I work with a uh, transportation engineer for DPW. As explained, I have Bill Hargraves for the Board of Health Representative. I'm Gary Hartwell, representing Public Works. I'm Richard Cooper, citizen. Devin Bruce, um, the planning board. I'm Councilor Ryan O'Donnell, board Um, I'm Councilor Elisa Klein, board seven. And then help me, director of public works, the economy, director of central services. I'm mean, Titan, director of planning development, planning sustainability. James Lowenthal, citizen and uh, member of um, Bike Pet Committee. Uh, Mary Madura, the clerk. Okay, the, the next item on the agenda, I think, is approval of uh, the schedule. Um, excuse me, oh, you excuse want me. to elect the vice chair? Oh, pardon me. Uh, does anyone want to open nominations for vice chair? I nominate Councilor Lewis Klein. Second. A second. Um, all in, all in favor? Or discussion? discussion. I just want to check in about it if we're having a little discussion here. I mean, it, it's not necessary for it to be one of the counselors, and I'm more than happy to um, see somebody else on the on the commission do this. I don't. I mean, I appreciate. Thank you very much for the nomination. I just don't need to do that um, in any kind of certainly in any kind of formal way. So I'm very happy for us to entertain other nominations. Typically, uh, in my memory, which isn't that long, it has been. But the other thing I'm aware of is we have so many city participants from different departments that in some ways I like the counselors leading it because it doesn't put them in positions of, of you know, carrying things through, uh, that, you know, developing a consensus from all the departments about something, although that typically happens. I agree it shouldn't be department heads, and I agree it doesn't have to be counselors, but I think it could be counselors or community members or the public 
play an objective in Cass. You know, maybe this is a sort of institutional memory thing, is at some point there may be a counselor who shouldn't be chair or vice chair, and we shouldn't always have an expectation that it's chair or vice chair. You know, in this case, it'd be vice one of them. I don't mean counselors who should be because they're a bad person, I mean, because they may not be interested in having a talk. They could be bad. I think we have. It should be institutional memory. In this case, it's not that problem. <laughs> in my opinion, I agree with Devin because uh, the department heads and the city councilors have, have a better handle on the day to day operations of what's going on in city government. Those of us who are outside, the citizens, I really typically am outside, I, I think it has to be somebody within the day to day operations. I just think back. No, I, 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 think, I think back. I think, wasn't made an archivist chair before he became a counselor? So I think we've had a history of sort of an active. Was that changed? Okay. But anyway, I, so, you know. I think you're right. Any other discussion or comments? Any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, so is there a motion to close nominations? So moved. So moved. Um, so I think we now vote on Councillor Elisa Klein, who's been nominated for vice chair. We just do all in favor. Okay. Aye. Aye. Seems it's unanimous. Congratulations, Councillor Elisa Klein. Thank you. Okay, now we move on to the meeting schedule. Um, I guess everyone has this before them. Is there any discussion or, or comments? Any problems? Sorry. I, I guess I have a question about the um, summer schedule. I know that some of the committees and commissions take off the month of August or <coughs> summer. Has that not been historically what this commission has done? That makes them up year round. Haven't we, haven't we skipped uh, one or two meetings in summers? No, not that I can recall. Okay. I assume we'd be able to change this as time goes on, if need be. That's my night is busiest, it needs us most. Okay. So is there a motion to approve this meeting schedule? We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not in favor? That is passed. Um, the next item is approval of minutes for November 19th and December 17th, 2013. Entertain a motion to, to approve. Okay. A small correction on the um, November 19th, 2013 meeting list under number nine, did you get the updates? Can you go was paid this past year? It was not Praxi. So do we, do we make a motion to amend that? Is that how that works? Yes, please. Where is that now? I don't know. Nine, the third bullet. Right here on the 19th. So it's it says, can you go Praxi when it's done? Can you go exactly paid this past year? Should be paid. here as an observer. Okay. So it appears there's no public comment today. Um, next item, reports from committees. Um, 
Someone will have to help me with this. So is this an item that is in the stack of paper here that we're approving, or? No. There's there's nothing in your packet that's okay. just um, committees with reporting. Mary, is this a point at which we could maybe, um, I think, Wayne, you're the um, liaison to the parking committee? And James on the way on getting on. I'm not on parking. Oh, parking, sorry. So there's a question about whether I understand, I've been hearing rumors that so many people have stepped off that committee that we haven't got a quorum at this point, and I just wanted an update along those lines if you and Devin, if you have that. So it's a, Holly and I were having an email today about this. So it's a seven-person committee of which, and correct me if I say the wrong thing, of which four have to be citizen members. So the other three could come from this commission or not. The committee is down to four people. Um, so a bare quorum exists um, of the committee, but obviously to anyone who's missing, they can't meet. And they have a record of them. So it's a free expression of, if there's only three people from the citizens, does that make a quorum? I'm not sure it's totally clear. But usually it's four and seven. So it's four and seven. We have four members. And public transportation, which is the transit committee, that's the one that doesn't have any reports to form. We only have two members left. I don't know what the full membership is. Um, if the new member in item nine, <coughs> Mr. Novit, were approved, would we then have to form? Yeah. It's just two vacancies would be nice to fill at some point, I guess. Anything else on reports from committees? So we just move on now, right? We don't have to take any action on that, or do we? Well, do we need to approve the reports? Or? Um, Please just make another comment. Just in terms of the those two committees that are um, just barely making a quorum, it sounds like at this point, what kinds of efforts have are going into or have gone into recruiting new members? Um, is that not done at all? Are we waiting for the mayor to simply send down the folks that are, I mean, is there any kind of proactive effort yeah. to recruit folks? I don't know in terms of the first question, if there's any proactive. I haven't been involved with it, if there is. But this is a committee appointment, so the mayor doesn't appoint the subcommittee, so that's totally up to you. But whether the, la whether the last chair did outreach or not, I don't know. Yes. Chair of the commission? Of this commission, whether, whether he did an outreach at some point. Any other discussion on this point? Um, I just wonder if we need to talk about some kind of effort to, in fact, do proactive outreach, if that's something that uh, doesn't be discussion in this forum, or um, I mean, am I allowed to weigh in? Sure. I, I move to recognize Holly Mott. Sorry. So, uh, I'm Holly Mott. I'm the chair of the parking committee. And uh, there, the, there has been some outreach on the part of the committee members, but informal. Um, so people that we know who have either come to parking committee meetings in the past, expressed interest. Um, there's also a forum, a group on Facebook that community members join, and it's an ongoing discussion, essentially, of parking. Um, and we've posted a call for interested citizens there, but that's about it the extent of it. Can I ask a question? What's the uh, what's the name of the group on Facebook if we were interested it's, in looking that up? Uh, it's either the Northampton City Parking Discussion okay. or Northampton Parking Discussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, I wonder if it would be useful for um, us Ryan to bring this up in city council to ask city councilors to do some um, outreach to the residents to try and recruit some members if that would be useful. If folks think that's a good idea, we can certainly put that in motion. Okay. Any discussion on that point? What would, what would we do? Would we make a formal recommendation from this this commission that the city council do that? Mm -hmm. We just propose to raise it. You could just announce it, like under one of the announcements, that there are vacancies. So, in fact, you could, you could announce it. Or I could say. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Wait, I didn't realize that the transit was a subcommittee. I thought it was just a delegate. Is it actually running as a committee? 
So, so we have two separate things. So the mayor has an appointment to PBTA committee, PBTA steering committee, which is me, uh -huh. um, and that's his appointment. And then this group has a subcommittee, um, which is called public transportation, which is basically transit. And how many people would you think should be on that committee? Because currently there are none, right? I think there's one or two right left, but maybe there's one left. Um, Jim Nash is on it, and maybe he's the only one who's left. Um, I don't know the answer to how many people there were uh, on it before. So, so the, you, the ordinance created this committee specifically calls for a parking subcommittee. And then it says, and what other, other com whatever other committees this group wants. So it's sort of been, I wouldn't say it's ad hoc, but it's a simpler format for doing I know for biped, which is <coughs> there is no set membership. Mm -hmm. You guys appoint and they, they show up for doing that. Um, for public, public transportation, it might be worth I mean, it's great to recruit people, but it might be worth before you go too far in recruiting to try to define what that committee is supposed to be. Because it's never quite been clear to me how much it is big picture discussions that would come back before us and how much is very much in the weeds. They've mostly been in the weeds. PBTA has been switching from a, a flag route system where you flag down a bus to a formal bus stop system. And that's what the committee has been doing for two years. The reason you almost never get feedback from them is they're not doing big, sexy politics or policy. They're really saying, should the bus stop be here or here? And except for one very controversial one in Florence that did come before you, those have all been non-controversial, so they make a recommendation of PT. That process is almost done, so I'm not sure what the committee's next big task is for doing. Yeah, um, two thoughts. One is, I liked Leslie reporting back to the group, but that was just because I liked knowing what was going on, but I, I don't know that it influenced what we were doing. Um, but if we did reinvigorate that subcommittee, it would seem like now might be a time as they're doing their replanning, re but as soon as they get through with that step, I, I don't see that we would have much of an influential role at all. The committee may not be really reconstituted in time to be effective for that process. And that process is going to be done by the end of the spring, I think. So be a new committee and they figure out who they were. Um, just to voice, as long as we're, we're doing this, I, I would think a delegate from this committee that might attend it in, at times when you're, you're unable to, or and that might sort of report back to us might be all that's needed in that room. But that's just an opinion, it's an idea. Yeah. And the last thing I want to keep the dialogue going through on, but here, so Jim Nash, who's the last, I think, last remaining person of the committee, is also either on or maybe even chairman of the mayor's advisory uh, training station committee, whatever it's called. The rail advisory committee. Right. And in some ways, I think that's the more important. So the system wide issues are going to be largely determined this spring. The bigger issue is at some point, we know the train system has to be realigned to serve the train station better. And I think that's going to be the way we do a change the pulse point from academy music to move it further east, really build a new multi, I mean, whatever it is, it's going to be that downtown is the big battle going forward. Right now. So to go back to something that you just said, Wayne, do we have, does this commission have definitions of these committees? Are there, um, you know, some kind of rubrics for responsibilities and, um, yeah. and the ways in which we interact with the committees and so forth, because I have heard a lot of feedback, particularly from the parking committee, that there hasn't been kind of reciprocity of information and, you know, assistance, um, you know, one to the other and so forth. And so I'm just wondering if there's some way in which we can make these effective committees. Yes, good question. <coughs> parking is actually the clearest of them because that's in the ordinance. I don't know. Was there something like that? Seem like I'm just trying to remember, so maybe someone else can fill in. But didn't Jesse, didn't um, Owen do something that was like not an ordinance, but an ordinance? Does it form look like an ordinance to, to describe what the committees are? You have bylaws for the parking committee. Oh, I put them at each of your desks. So how about for the other committees? Do we have a similar thing? I've never seen the other. Okay. So the answer is probably not. For that Process we might need to put in place to create um, 
um, definitions and expectations and obligations and so forth for these committees to make them useful and to make them feel like they're actually being uh, <coughs> responded to and that kind of thing. It would be useful. I'm just wondering what that process would be within this commission. I mean, it's, it's a good question. It's something I guess any one of us could propose if they were to write it themselves. But I don't know the answer to that. Does anyone have any thoughts? I don't. Maybe it's worth either I or someone else might email Jim Nash because he doesn't have institutional memory for, for public transportation. To, I may have been to a couple of meetings, but I don't have a, an overall sense to ask what works and what doesn't work. And, if we're doing bylaws, I mean, it's only one person, but at least he knows more about that committee than I do. I can, I can do that if it's useful. And I'm just wondering if it's useful to have some sort of ad hoc committee with a couple folks from this commission and maybe one person from each of those that would have to be Jim Nash, I guess, and somebody from the parking committee to draw up some, some proposed um, guidelines or Something. As Mary pointed out, uh, we do have some bylaws for the parking committee, which uh, Mary kindly provided to all of us here. So it's this sheet here that describes uh, the mission that we hashed out over the course of several meetings last year. We don't, as far as we know, have an equivalent for the other how, how did you hash them out? Just in uh, I think um, I think right. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, drafted it and brought it to us, and we commented and iterated a few times uh, in, during the course of the meetings. Well, I guess we have to make a motion to do something at some point, or, or discuss it further, or discuss it later. Does anyone have a specific action to suggest? Maybe we can table it to the next meeting as an agenda item because this has come up as a non-agenda item and, yeah. and uh, maybe we can be prepared to a couple people to step forward to maybe put something together. <laughs> okay, so if everyone agrees, we'll just put it on the agenda for next time. <laughs> Bring it up. And hopefully at that time we won't keep putting it on the agenda. Uh, okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, so I think now we move to uh, the application for membership of the parking committee. Uh, Mr. Adam Novick. Uh, excuse me, you have, um, no, you actually did, yes. That is the name. Okay. Uh, but you still need to help me, because what, what are we doing now? We well, have this application. He sent that application in some time ago, but of course the committee wasn't meeting. So I provided you a copy of his application for consideration on the parking committee. Okay. Something we discuss at this, this stage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This commission nominates people to that committee. So we're seeking a nomination perhaps today from this commission to the committee. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, is there any, any, any discussion on, on this application? Everyone? Mm -hmm. okay. well, if you, if you Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the Rail Advisory Committee with Adam and um, his, as, as Wayne mentioned, he would, he would be a benefit of the parking, you know, he, that, that's not a very active committee, so it's just a matter of drawing down, you know, his time. So if he's put in his application, I'm, I think that's great. I think we need a motion to, a motion before we can have this discussion. Sure. To nominate him? Much well, not right? Right. I nominate Adam Novick for the parking committee. Okay. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Uh, or, do we just, or do we need to discuss it now okay, yeah. further before we vote? I thought, oh, so the motion is not just to, to make the nomination. Uh, if you have a second, the nomination is sort of on the floor. The motion is to nominate him. You get a second, then you have discussion. Then discussion. Then. Okay, thank you. Nomination. <clears throat> okay. Then you vote. Thank you. So now we're all set. And now we can, we can have more discussion. If there isn't. Well, I'll just offer that I've known Adam for years uh, through, uh, mostly through bicycling, bicycle advocacy, and, uh, <coughs> but also through uh, other work in town. I think he's a uh, fine citizen, he's um, smart, he's creative. Um, he, uh, I 
think it would be a good addition to the committee. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
dollars funding up to one one hundred thousand. So if uh, application is in a, in a zone or a neighborhood where DPW planned to do a project, like for example North Main Street, no North, North Street, if we had a uh, application for it, that would get that would have a 100 point because that project was planned with the DPW in 2012. Uh, number six, it's maximum 10 points. Uh, it's pedestrian activity. We take a uh, half mile radius from. Uh, Uh, from suggested street of or neighborhood re requesting traffic coming, we give one point if we have school in half mile radius. We give one point for if it has playground or park. Also one point for if it has hospital, and one point if it's CDBG vicinity. One point if it has retail business, and we take population in consideration and uh, uh, we're using uh, GIS block, uh, block group uh, population map and we give, if it's high density population we give five points if it's, uh, if it's small density population we give one point. Uh, neighborhood support. Uh, we have a map with approximate Populate uh, density uh, of uh, neighborhood requesting traffic coming, and uh, so if they have, we divide signature that they have on application divided by total population, and they give uh, one point, one point for every, one, uh, for every ten percent of the household that who submitted um, Northampton coming application. Does that include signing petitions? They actually have to submit an application as opposed to just signing onto a petition that somebody is circulating? Yes, that's the one. Uh, one application with signatures. Okay. So it's a one application. Uh, Pace car participation. Uh, so yeah, it's a program that Northampton has. And, uh, we just divide people who citizen who sign applications and who participate in peace uh, car peace car. Uh, we divide peace car participation over number of signatures we have. So and one point for twenty uh, for twenty percent maximum five points. Alternative funds it's up to one one hundred points. One point for every thousand uh, uh, dollars, because if we have alternative funding, we can do this project. It's easier for us to do it, so that's why it's maximum one hundred points. And waiting list is just one point for every year that it's uh, on waiting list, and the maximum five points. So, any comments or other questions? I'll just comment that uh, to me, this is the uh, this is kind of the elephant in the living room because the whole city wants traffic calming, and you can see how many traffic calming requests are have, we've compiled over the years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have worked on developing this program, and a lot of us have put a lot of time, especially Ned and his department, into doing the, the very thorough, detailed technical analysis of each case and producing a report and. Really, we're just spinning our wheels because we don't have any money to implement. So it's just so painfully slow and piecemeal to get projects implemented. It really depends on the luck of a particular project having access to funds that can bump it into action. But I think we're collecting them faster than we're implementing them. Isn't that right? So just so the committee knows, especially the new members of the committee, um, the commission, I should say, uh, every year for the past four, if not five years, I've been recapping improvements requests for 
$100,000 each year for five years to help fund these applications moving forward, and we never received any money as of yet. Just so you're aware of that. To help fund these particular applications. The applications themselves. Has that decision been made for the latest round of, that, of requests? They haven't announced the 2015 capital improvements yet. I, I have a question. When, when were these? Um, I, I agree, it's very impressive. And, and uh, so September 2008. Is that when it was created, or was that when it was last changed? That's when it was created. That's when it was created. Yeah. Have there been, been any lessons or ways we might improve it? Or I'm not eager to crack it open unless it has to. Just curious. Uh, just reading system that this uh, manual has. It's not um, up to date. Uh, that's why I wrote email that uh, we have to update the uh, greeting system in the manual because website has still has the old manual. I think we have to revise that. Are these your revisions here in, in uh, the email that you have? Revisions. This document, Alex says, uh, as at the top says, as of. Uh, May 16, 2012. Is that the latest version of the grading system? Uh, yes, I made two corrections, but that was just a small correction uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So, but this is the current one. Okay. So I also need to update the manual and bring it for your approval and then do it according to what's in here. Okay. So, do we need to, today, approve the, the change to the manual? Or is that something that the no, department I, does? You know? If I recall right, this has already been vetted by the TPC. So it just need to, the book needs to be updated mm -hmm. to reflect these changes. Let me just do one minor update, so it's a tiny bit of news. It, it is a TC3. We should get 100 for alternative funding and it's virtually because it will be done this spring. Mm -hmm. But we do have alternative funding? Yes. And so that construction is, as I said, two thirds done. I think we did find your code. Is it, do you know amount? Is it more than 100,000? I don't know if we don't know. I'm not sure we have it. Maybe just we can look at the line items. But this is part of Florence Field. Mm -hmm. So the whole project is a $16,000 project. I don't know what the percentage was for the sidewalks. It's probably over 100,000. Yeah, because it's getting one point for, for every thousand. That's what I should say. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the project's going to be anyway. But. I have a question that's um, very specific and directed. If um, there's a neighborhood that uh, wants to develop a petition to put in a sidewalk in a particular area, would that fall under the, the realm of traffic calming, or is that a there's some separate process for that? I think that would be Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever thought that they wanted a sidewalk? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There is occasional push for sidewalks in the neighborhood, especially out in the West Farms area. Um, <clears throat> we actually just expended the last $300,000 that we were given by capital improvements this past year for priority sidewalks that the uh, TPC came up with. Last updated about five years, four years ago, six, six years ago. So that probably should be looked at again at some point in the near future and between the next priorities. I did put in another capital request for the next five years for new sidewalks and reconstructing the uh, old, old sidewalks that need repair. But um, like I said, I don't know if we have 515 funding. To answer your question, though, I think the answer is yes. I should submit one thing that we've always said is. We think people should submit the problem, but leave the, the solution up into discussion. Because you can imagine, I mean, that was pretty easy, maybe it's straightforward, but some might think the problem is speeding and maybe the problem is something different. Um, but I think it's a good method. So, to fill out a traffic plan application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are still working on the priority list. We just ran out of funds. Just so you're aware of that. So, I think it's sort of background for. Those you are new. So our sustainable camp and comprehensive plan is now six or seven years old. Um, and it included this 
uh, appendix where Ned was talking about the creating a priority for sidewalks and, and journey to school. Um, our goal is to begin revising that plan in 2000, to, to revise that plan in 2015 to that end the bike and head subcommittee has started talking about what should the new appendix be. That will come before the full committee for approval. So they really just been brainstorming what's there. But so our hope is in 2014 we start thinking about that appendix for a, in essence a bike and path master plan that then becomes an appendix to the overall comprehensive plan. Um, and hopefully the committee's gonna work on that for a few months and then we go through the public hearing process next year, that becomes part. So obviously we'll change what goes forward, but that at least might be the bones of the discussion. But that doesn't happen to this commission. So what we did for the, the um, city's comprehensive plan is by law currently has to be approved just by the plan. What we've done, what we did seven years ago, because it doesn't mean much if only the planning board does it, is we went to almost every board we could pick about. So we literally had 10 boards who approved it. This board being one, city council. So it should come before this committee um, because obviously the transportation piece is approved. But who conducts the um, hearings, the public hearings, and so forth? Planning office would oversee that with the planning board. Any other discussion about the traffic comment? Anyone? We don't have to take any action today. Okay. Uh, well, let's move along then. That's okay with everyone to DPW updates. Alex? Uh, full reconstruction of Hinkley Street. We actually have today a uh, public meeting at 6, so it's quite interesting. Welcome. Uh, Mill and overlay uh, for Main Street, Florence, North Main, North Main Street. Uh, and that section of Jackson Street between School and Bridge Road. That's a middle of an overlay for this year. Uh, we received the 75% uh, land review for North King Street sidewalk project. So hopefully this year it's gonna uh, they're gonna start working on. It. Um, we also received 75% review uh, cons and pleasant intersection roundabout. So we already reviewed that 75%. So it's right now going to 100. So your may I ask a question? So is your your review of the of the potential roundabout, which is um, it's a city project or a state project? It's a mass DOT. It's a mass DOT. It's a mass DOT. It's a mass DOT. So the goal with that Mass DOT project was the previous mayor made a commitment that um, if they corrected that intersection, the city would take over the state layout from approximately Hoylick Street to the bowling alley or the flood control system. So this is part of that process going forward of accepting that with the state layout the city layout going forward. Uh, yes. Uh, 25% plan review almost done. Uh, we have meeting uh, <coughs> to discuss more with the Mass DOT for Hatfield Street and North King Street roundabout. So that 25% that, uh, almost done. Uh, we're waiting for a proposal from Hassel O'Neill for King Street section between North and Summer intersection and uh, Finn Street. We're trying to improve that intersection and we're waiting for, for proposal for, from Fasonio and also temporary fix for New South Street next to Main Street. Uh, uh, Fasonio working for proposal to improve that section before we do permanent fix. Um, yeah, today we just received the uh, email from Nelson Nightgar for review um, actually that section of this uh, New South Street. Uh, we received that email, we're going to review it and uh, I'm going to have more updates after. Yes? Can you uh, tell us, please, what the um, what the instructions are to Fuss and O'Neill for the uh, King Street 
uh, section between North and Finn. What is the scope of their proposal? Um, I think <laughs> we should do that. We can explain better. So they're just doing the fee proposal, so we haven't gotten that yet. But it's basically to look at, so they began the work of the North King Street intersection, um, got to 25% design, more or less, or early 25%. Um, we did a Nelson Nygaard report to, to basically to look at their work in Nelson Nygaard and think about changes consistent with that. So that would be sort of thinking about King Street in that section, having turn pockets, instead, instead of being two lanes between Finn and North, having turn pockets, making north, which is where the cars queue back, two lanes, and generally looking at the alignment. But that, that's sort of the basic outline for it. So m most of it sounds as if it's geared at getting the cars through. I just, I'm just um, hoping that we're keeping the pedestrians and bikes in mind when we, when we make all those changes. Yeah, I, actually I think it's, I mean, it's heavily about how do you calm the traffic so that you don't have cars. I mean, right now there's a lot of lane shifts there which make it really dangerous for, for bicyclists. So how do you make it safer? But we haven't asked them explicitly to add bike lane capacity. So that's part of the discussion. Bike and Pet actually originally didn't want bike lanes there because the problem is bike lanes make it wider and so cars go through the intersection faster. So that's that's part of the discussion with us and you know, is could you actually get a waiver? But Bike and Pet was on the, the record as saying bike lanes don't make it safer, they make it less safe in that spot because it's narrowing the intersection. <coughs> But that's part of it be coming back at us or looking at this stuff. Will there be a chance for public input? Yeah. Yeah, these are the early stages. Mm -hmm. they're, they're required by law, Mass DOT will have a formal 25% public hearing. Ned and, and I, for both projects we've been involved with, have been having pre-25% public forums earlier to get those inputs. So I assume we'll do the same thing for this. Yeah, we're just waiting for a proposal for now. Uh, and the last project is that's Mass DOT project. They um, plan to replace four bridges, uh, highway bridges, on two on um, Mountain Town, Route Nine, Route Five, Route Five, yeah, Route Five. Uh, uh, those uh, two bridges, uh, highway bridges, next to Bowling Alley, and two bridges on Hakanam Road. But uh, it's um, uh, DPW just reviewed 25 percent. It was all part of the Route 91 system, right? Not city. Yeah. Why? Well, please go. Ahead. Those would be pretty major projects, wouldn't they? Yeah. They will be. And they would go on for they'd be multi-year and lots of disruption to local residents. Um, probably more disruption to the people using the interstate. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I reviewed that. It wasn't. It wasn't much disruption. All, I believe it's only two or three days when the resident going to have to use uh, detours, mm -hmm. but mostly it's going to be, uh, mostly it's not going to disrupt the residents. I was thinking more about the noise of uh, jet noise. jack hammers, whatever. It's multi year projects. Oh, they didn't give us a timeline on it. <clears throat> it's part of the accelerated bridge. It is, and that's just nice. Yes. Work really well in '93 and other places. Work yeah. well in East Hampton. <coughs> so. Alex, do you want to add exit 19? Hmm? Do you want to add exit 19? Tip? Yeah, exit 19. Damon, Damon Road. Damon oh, Road. oh yeah. Coolidge Bridge. That's another project. Yeah, um, that's not a project. Uh, Mass DOT project. Um, a concept right now to make a roundabout at exit 19, next to Damon Road. Um, but that that project is still uh, under process. Wait, where can I ask? Um, where are we in terms of exit 19? In terms of the timeline, three of the cases. It's in the tip now for the first time. I'm sorry. It's in the tip, which I hadn't realized. So this, the, the funding set. So transportation improvement program okay. is the funding for when it's federal funds and state funds. So that's 90 percent federal, 10 percent state, and it's in the tip. Do you remember? Like, it was five years out, and those things always get pushed back. So don't hold your breath for it, but until now, it's always been a concept plan. At least now it's program. I mean, you know, so uh -huh. it, it's not going to happen that quickly, but at least it's starting the process. Okay. Did we ever get any further updates after we did the meeting and this, you guys did the site? 
Let's finish the report. The road, the road safety audit was done and completed the same with Dean and Road RSA was done. So those take you forward? And <clears throat> yes. To us, those were a separate meeting, okay. I just have I don't recall seeing it, so. So the roundabout at Damon Road, that's Ridge Road and Damon Road? No, Damon it's, Road it's street. and yeah. street. exit 19 of uh, uh, Interstate. The, the Coolidge, Coolidge Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, Coolidge Bridge. Yeah. So Bridge Street. Bridge Street. Yes. Bridge Street. Did I say Ridge Road? Yeah. I'm sorry. Bridge Street. So that would be you come over the bridge and you're into a roundabout. People coming off the highway would enter the roundabout. So this would eliminate that traffic signal? Yes. Okay. Two lane round. <coughs> With slip lanes. No. <laughs> I was just going to ask that question. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I, I don't. Uh, has that been in the process for a while? I mean, I know that we've, we've talked about adding another exit, non 19, like a 19A and B or something. There was a proposal written to be um, northbound on and off ramps onto Demon Road. Right. And that's not currently in the plan. Okay. The other aspect of the Dixon 19 project, my understanding is an additional turning lane onto I-91 south okay. on the other side of Alpha District. And extend the ramp. The ramp is short now. So the ramp will be longer, which would be some takings way over there. So I-91 south, but not north, so we're still going to have 91 north. There's not going to be any access north from there. Right. So it's still basically a split overlay between 19 and 20. <clears throat> what they did as part of the report, they actually tracked license plates for a period of time to see where people were going when they got out to Damon or uh, to King Street. Mm -hmm. And they found out that they weren't going on 91 North. And that thought that would be a big help to that intersection to get them off Damon Road early. And through this license plate uh, you know, uh, knowledge, they, they found out that it wasn't an issue. People were going straight through a bridge road instead. And there's a separate Damon Road project that's also in the same stage. That's correct. And then you have the Knowledge Corridor project where they're going to be putting in a new signalized intersection at Industrial Drive mm -hmm. and timing the lights between King Street, the, the railroad crossing, and Industrial Drive at all at the same time. And with that project, also the tunnel will go underneath at Woodmont Road to link all the rail trails together. And are we still expecting that for early construction? Construction, yes, construction next year. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, my, the, in <coughs> early February, I haven't checked the website, I should have. In early February, they originally got a bid, they're going to release bids. Again, I haven't looked at the Mass DOT site to see if it's there. We have, you're going to see this as counselors, the, um, the state's doing all the construction. It's the city's responsibility to buy the land, the national grid behind Taco Bell, and we're still waiting for documents for that to happen. So that will be sort of our hurry up in council once we get it. Um, and they told us they could go to bid without those, but they couldn't actually start construction. So I, I think that's right. I think they're talking about this summer's construction, but I don't really believe it until it's signed by. Okay. The other thing I wanted to add on to Alex's first project he talked about, which was the uh, repaving of um, Main Street, Florence, and North Main Street. It stops at the roundabout, but it also incorporate bike lanes from the center of Florence out. To the roundabout and the roundabout um, down at Look Park. Pardon me? Down at Look Park. Yes. And it'll be basically a share of the road type option through the center of Florence because there's not enough width of the park. With uh, share of? Yes. So that's the goal of that is to provide that parking out of the, uh, the transportation corridor for bicycles. So there'll be an ordinance coming out for that to um, amend the bike lanes to include those areas. That's great. Do you plan to connect the dots between the bike lane that ends in front of the high school and Center Fort? We'd love to at some point. Yeah. Some point. Anything else in the police? Did you say there were uh, plans for a roundabout at Hatfield Street and North King? Yes. Oh, it's uh, almost 25% done. Uh, we have to do. We have to. Uh, we're going to have a meeting with Ms. DOT to uh, take into consideration some aspects, but yes, it's almost 25%. What was the impetus for that? Is there uh, is that an accident scene? or 
they just trust So when um, River Valley Market <coughs> asked for rezoning, or actually their predecessor asked for rezoning going back 15 years, um, as part of rezoning, we asked them to hire VHB to do an assessment intersection. And it, even then, 15 years ago, it met the warrants for a signal and a roundabout. The volume was pretty high. So not a huge amount of crashes, but a fair amount of speed that goes up, up there. Um, and then when River Valley Market was developed as part of the rezoning traffic mitigation, they gave $100,000 for traffic mitigation, which is not true design. So we, we hired, um, I'm blanking out, who's in here? Uh, time bond. Time bond, thank you. We hired time bond with the co-ops, $100,000, so it takes us to design. So it's not, you know, this is, it's sort of similar to the traffic common discussion. It's not, frankly, the worst intersection in town, but it's a bad intersection. I mean, it should be fixed. It wouldn't be the highest in the priority because it's good we money. got the money right, uh, and it, so it should be fixed. <coughs> are, are there real discussions, by the way, happening about the intersection uh, at Prospect and Woodlawn and Jackson for a roundabout? Uh, did you, was did you mention that? I'm sorry. It is on my list. <laughs> uh, I guess I just want to know about the timeline for that. Or for um, it's actually going to be together with a project for Mill and Overlay for Main Street, North Main Street, and Jackson. Um, it's part of that project, and uh, if they're going to have enough funds, it should be this year. It's already designed. Uh, it's, uh, it's still going to be four-way stop with. Uh, Sculpt islands in the middle on uh, Prospect Street to um, get uh, lines narrower. Uh, plus, it's gonna have more crosswalks and uh, also uh, curb ramps for park. Uh, right now, it's pretty much designed. Just need findings. Just, just funding. <laughs> <laughs> When you said curb ramps, you mean they're going to be curb extensions so that the crosswalks are shortened? Or, or accessible, wheelchair accessible. Yeah, accessible wheelchair. So will the, will the curbs be extended out? You said no. room for parking? Is that what you said? No, the scored oh. islands. Scored, scored concrete islands. Oh, okay. I'll see at the intersection of uh, south and old south. Basically, in front of the high school, there's yeah. scored islands. On yeah. King Street, there's scored islands. Yes. Yeah. So it's a temporary fix until we have a much bigger project, whether it's going to be a signalized intersection or a mini roundabout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything further on DPW updates? Or else? Oh. Okay. Uh, why don't we move to the next agenda item, uh, which we discuss the replacement of citizen member. Um, now, did we do that already with the notice? No, but no. this is the other committee. This is public transportation. And this goes back to the same discussion we had. This is the committee that is down to only I think one member now. Public transportation. Public transportation. But we have no no candidate. Right. Okay. That kind of goes back to our discussion about proactive recruitment. Mm-hmm. And the Leslie. Um, is a transit rider not by choice because she can't take, she's visually impaired. And so I think that's probably a niche we particularly need on that committee is somebody who's a heavy transit rider, not just someone who supports it, but who knows the ins and outs of stuff. Does anyone know if these citizen members are being put on the web page as being open for any of these openings on the city web page? Good question. Mm -hmm. Who manages our content now? I'm sorry? Who manages our content on the website? I don't know. I mean, I saw the email. Laura, Laura is really doing that to some degree, right? Laura. Hanson. She's gone. Yeah, she was. No, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. yeah, she was on that. You're talking our particular website. The transportation yeah. part. Yeah. I thought you meant the city website. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no every commission. Moved over to it. Right. We don't, since Laura left, we don't have anybody managing our content. So, like the traffic calming report is updated because no one's updated. So, maybe that's something we should put on the agenda for discussion, too. <clears throat> if we don't have someone with this committee, maybe 
as part of your recruiting people, you can get a volunteer in the community that has some skills that can help us do that. I, I was just thinking that seems to me that it should be a function of somebody within the IT department at City Hall. Well, somebody has to provide them with the information. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm also wondering if we can um, talk to, I'm not even sure who it would be, the mayor's office to do some kind of feature um, on the home site that just uh, kind of does some proactive recruitment for these committees. I know that they occasionally will feature something that's a particular, right now it's the stormwater ordinance is kind of front and center on the home page, but maybe um, just some kind of proactive that's reach to try and yeah. attract members yeah. for these committees. I believe one of those blue tabs has that. There's jobs in the city. I thought there was another one for volunteer for commissions and boards. No, there is. But what I'm suggesting is that um, occasionally they change the homepage Page. content with okay. something that's particularly pressing or um, just kind of making it more of a focal point, and maybe we can do that for recruitment for members for these committees. I know the mayor's agent and Simmons had a lot to do with setting up the website, but I don't know who's managing the day-to-day content now. That's not my ass. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm happy to volunteer and look into that and just see if there's something we can do to kind of get the word out there a little bit more aggressively than just the kind of passive nature of the site. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to look at the Nelson Nygaard report that makes these recommendations, and then to move it forward to public hearings. The public hearings will be in March, maybe March and April, I'm not sure. And then we'll come back to the board, possibly the April meeting, partially at the June meeting. I'm not sure how fast we'll go. Uh, they're trying to gear up because they have money starting in this coming fiscal year. So as close after July 1st as they can do it. But, but just so you know, the, the, the big picture part of this, PDTA does, a, they talk about two kinds of riders. They talk about transit dependent riders, who we all want to serve, the people who live in the housing projects, the people who ride. 44 is a perfect example of transit dependent riders. It's a pretty horrible route. It takes forever to get anywhere. So you only ride it if you have no options. But it does serve a lot of people. And they talk about choice riders, and the M40 to Amherst is a good example of that, the only example we have. It's a good bus, it goes fast, it's faster than driving. Um, and they're trying to sort of find the right mix of still serving transit dependent riders, but making sure that the routes are attractive enough that choice riders take them, and the transit dependent riders don't wait forever for doing it. So the balancing act is, frankly, some stops have been added over the years for political reasons, not, not necessarily Northampton. How do you make the route efficient? Um, and so the question is both sort of where exactly does the route go, and does it make sense to pull into stop and shop, for example, or should you stop in front of stop and shop? You know, it's, you obviously want to go right to where you want to go if you're taking the bus, but if you're not getting off at stop and shop, you don't want to wait for everyone else goes there. And so that's the overall system. They're trying to basically dramatically reduce headway speed so buses go faster <coughs> and the bus service is more frequent in return some very low ridership stops and get stuff. So that's the big picture piece. And it, it, as Devin said, I think in Northampton, most of the changes are not controversial. They are going to cut out a section of King Street, because they're going to go down, they're going to go up King Street to Barrett and go Barrett to Jackson, which is a higher ridership area, but the trade-off is that they skip in the section of King Street. So I don't think any of it's controversial. It's what they're not doing. They're not doing. So they've talked about splitting the 44 into two routes. They've talked about making a, co a little collector run. So I'm not sure what their solution would be for that. But the piece that um, I, I think that the Survival Center brings to it is that they currently have uh, donors who are willing to pay for uh, cab subsidies. So people can generally get to the Survival Center and be dropped off, but then it may take them an hour to get their food supply and waiting, and there's not parking there, and there's efforts to redo the parking. So. Um, that subsidy, if you would call that, that sort of uh, cab fare could turn into uh, transit tickets. And so in a way, uh, the Survival Center is trying to uh, communicate to PBTA that they could help influence the ridership if a route were taken by the Survival Center. It seems there's, there's two pieces, though. One is, will the bus stop at the survival center? And what's the frequency? So if somebody's going to be dropped off there and then they're going to shop for an hour, but yet they have to wait another two hours for the 44 to come back around. So there's the frequency piece as well. And you know, maybe they do that, increase the frequency by reducing another stop or... Yeah, at take, the uh, uh, PBTA meeting where they did the last public briefing, um, Heidi Norton Smith had given some statistics about time of uh, when it was open and the number of riders that lived in those five housing communities. So I think there's some data that can be given to them, but you're absolutely right. It's, it's a difficult problem. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, Wayne, I understand that you're, you're the appointment, the mayor's appointment to the PBTA. Um, and it was my understanding that the mayor's office actually was making a recommendation to support this idea that there would be a change in the route. Is that incorrect? May, I didn't see the final letter the mayor sent. I know he wanted to serve the survival center, but I think he also wanted to understand what the trade-offs were. He didn't want to say just serve them and not know who else would be affected. Um, and so I think it's doing that more to open it, you know, to, to get PDTA's attention to have them open a dialogue and do that analysis. I don't think he's heard back yet. I mean, it sounds like when you talk about a Republican article. Yeah, I'm having to recount the news. I mean, I'm just doing yeah. public news kind of thing. And so I think the answer is yes, he's trying to get the dialogue, but we don't know what the next step is what the trade offs are. Um, and I'm out of town in 26. I think he's going to go to that, that board meeting. I'm sort of officially his alternate anyway, so. I have a question for the commission building on what Councillor Klein um, 
sorry to talk about, which is, is there any role for this commission in terms of weighing in? I, th I think we want to weigh in thoughtfully. <coughs> Just like you say, you wouldn't want to make a recommendation without understanding all the, the dynamics. But is, is there any role for our commission in, in, in looking at that and, you know, passing a recommendation to the City Council? The City Council might look at it as a whole council. It's just a question for you. Well, it seems to me yes, in, in lieu of uh, our public transit commission, our committee, I think it does, I think it does fall to us to, to weigh in, to comment, think about it. I think it's our job. So, unfortunately, I, I don't feel ready to weigh in, having just seen it really today for the first time. Uh, so I want to know what the issues are. I, I, I sort of agree, it's the same trade-off piece. I think the critical part before the 26th has already happened from the mayor and from uh, Survival Center, which is sort of saying, we want you to take a, take a serious and look at the alternatives. So then they're going to be going to public hearing in March for it. So I think March would be a good time to weigh in. I mean, hopefully we all say it's great to make a solution we're done, but so maybe that's the timing. It's put on the, it has to put an agenda for your March meeting. By which point, hopefully, you know what's what they're what they're thinking. Um, it, it wasn't covered in the news articles, and it hasn't been really part of the public discussion. But the public transit plan that this committee voted on two years ago has that as an element in it, and so I think in some ways this committee has already dealt has already you know you may want to revisit it, but in my mind, approving that plan that specifically called for. Uh, public transit to serve the survival center did that. That's why there's two comments about that. One is that was as we began to think about the revision to the plan. So it and it's not in the state of Hampton, that's in our list of things we hope to come back to State of Hampton. And the second, because part of the discussion isn't just about bus service to the survival center, which I think everyone agrees with. It's also specifically about which bus. And that that I didn't include that. It just said bus service, because it, which, whether it's 42 or 44 is more about the trade-offs. And so I don't think we got that. Mm -hmm. Do we have the capacity to 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 weigh into the question of which bus and and which route? And I mean, can we find those answers, or is that beyond us? We certainly can see what PDTA is thinking of doing, and we can see the Survival Center's reaction to that, their response to that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how specific PDTA's analysis is going to get. You know, the idea would be for them to look at both 42 and 44 and assess the consequences of each one. If they give that to us, then yes, I'm not sure we have the independent ability to do that assessment. Because they, they have a result, and Nelson and I are doing the work for them. We don't really have to that big okay. Going back to um, Councilor O'Donnell's question, I'm wondering if it would be useful um, at these hearings to have somebody from this commission there um, in lieu of someone from the parking committee or the, the trans public transportation committee um, to come with the document that was prepared two years ago by this commission and um, whether it be just kind of symbolic or, you know, really would have some power, I'm not sure, but to add to the mayor's recommendation um, that this commission really strongly makes this recommendation that it needs to happen. Um, if, if that is appropriate for this commission and if there is somebody from the commission that's willing to go and, and represent the commission um, with that document. Is that something we would make a motion on one way or the other? Does anyone want to make that motion that someone will do that? I just need to clarify what the document says. It sounds like bus service and PBTA is saying we could do 44 or 42. We're going to do a little more research and we'll get back to you on another public hearing. We're just reiterating what they've already agreed to do is provide bus service. It may not be the one we want. I'm not sure they actually have a need, though, to, yeah. to provide that bus service. I don't think they actually are at that stage yet. I can't make the to the survival center. Is it, isn't that correct, though? I'm reacting to an article. In the well, that's what I, I read the article, too, that said, you know, they could do the 42, the 44 is more problematic, but they were going to work on it. Schedule another public hearing. 
Um, I'm, I'm encouraged that the mayor will go to the next meeting. I'm really happy about that. Um, I, you know, I would be happy to just make sure he knows that there is that statement in a previously approved public transit plan. And I think that's a step forward. We should wait and see what happens after that. I think someone should make the mayor aware of that so he has the ammunition. Because kind of the make, make of the PBT Authority Board is yes. they pay a lot of weight to the elected officials of the community. So if he has that quiver in his air, or air on his quiver, um, that might be the way to go to get it introduced to the board. So I guess I'd like to make a recommendation that maybe the chair of this committee talk with the mayor about that and present that back to him as a, mm -hmm. just to kind of bolster his position on that. Okay. I will. Someone, someone give it to me so I can try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can email, email it to you, would you? Thank you. <coughs> and if there's no need to perhaps consider a resolution or anything from this commission, that would go to the full city council, maybe at a later stage, but not now. Just wait. Just to confirm the, the, the meeting, the PBTA meeting we're talking about is Wednesday the 26th, is that correct? At noon? But again, that, that's not for public comment, so the mayor gets to speak. And that's the one, uh, Councilor Klein, you were suggesting we might have at least a symbolic presence at. <coughs> but it also sounds like it, we're satisfied with making sure the mayor has the documents. Okay. okay. You call that nodding by consensus? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like to nod in opposition. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion on, on this agenda item? All right. Now we move to one that I'm really going to need help with. Um, this is the next agenda item is um, an ordinance that I understand this commission previously looked at last year. I think recommended unanimously. Uh, about the parking garage. That was put in by my predecessor, Owen Daniels. Um, it came to the council meeting, and I believe, I believe it was Councilor Klein who suggested that it come back to this commission, which I think was an appropriate decision um, since it's a new commission um, for discussion. And I, since that time, the mistake was you gave me an opportunity to, to draft an amendment. Um, so I decided to, to play around with the language, so that is there too. But I need I need help with the process um, uh, from the city clerk about how we go about this. Excuse me, the council clerk. Uh, basically, you propose your amendments. The commission decides if they agree or like them. You might want to change the upon the recommendation. Um, to just transportation and parking commission, <coughs> if you want to put this forward. Okay. Um, do we do that first, or is there a discussion? Just a question. Yeah. Does it ever get referred back to city council before city council adjourned for the session? Yes, and they carried it forward. So they pushed it into the next session? Yes. As written? Yes. So it didn't die as a result of the end of the session. It still right. lives, right. but in a prior form. Correct. And I'm trying to remember, I thought I voted against it, but you were saying you have records that... I think you're there. correct. I don't think it was a unanimous vote. I don't have those minutes. My mistake. Okay. Just so I know where we are yeah, thank waiting you. to hear. But in any event, <laughs> it did recommend it out. Yes. Okay, now it's, the, now new, it's back. the new city council <clears throat> recommended it back to transportation because it's a new session, a new makeup of persons. Okay. So unless there's any discussion about the, the ordinance itself, I, I would I would um, propose an amendment to it, which which everyone has in front of you. Um, the purpose of the amendment is really pretty much just to clarify the language and and in fact shorten it to make it more concise. This is um, this is a a change to the, the city code that in some ways arises out of a very specific event. From the past, and I think we should be cautious about um, crafting laws that aren't just about specific controversies, but can endure and, and um, 
contribute something um, to the way we do things going forward. So, um, should I read it out? Should I read it out loud or what? I will read it out loud. <laughs> um, it says, if collecting established fees is impractical due to repair or replacement of machine parts or infrastructure, the mayor may temporarily alter fees for any municipal lot or metered space for a period not extending beyond the next city council meeting, after which altered fees shall revert to original fees. The mayor shall immediately write a letter to the city council president explaining the reasons behind the alterations. The city council may vote to extend, modify, or reverse the alteration of fees at any time. <coughs> so basically, if, if collecting these fees in the garage or any, any place is, is not feasible, <coughs> the mayor writes a letter to the city council explaining why um, the mayor has the authority to unilaterally change those fees, but that, that authority sunsets after the city council meets next, just as kind of a check on that, on that power. And the city council could at that time extend the altered fees um, or change them or reverse them. So it's, it's substantively the same thing. It's, 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 it's stated differently. Question, um, municipal lot or metered space explicitly uh, includes garage? <coughs> municipal lot or metered <coughs> space? Is that, is that meant to include the garage? That was language that was held over from the ordinance as written before. Um, I assume it means the garage, however... Just, just checking that. Yeah. If that's the intent, do that's we want to make intent. that explicit, or, or is there other language elsewhere in the in the ordinance, in the code, that that is consistent with this meaning, the garage included? I don't know the answer to that. We could certainly add garage. Mm -hmm. Not to be on the safe side. That if that's, isn't that the, the impetus for the... It, it was. <laughs> the change in the first place? Or, or garages. Yes, police station. Well, we have someone from the parking division that they want to be recognized to say something or so wishes. Well, um, I haven't introduced myself to, to the two counselors. My name is Nancy Forrestal. I'm a parking clerk. Um, the parking clerk's office does not oversee the parking garage, that central services. Um, however, if you're going to change language like that, I would suggest that you also make sure that you um, um, reference the new parking structure on Gothic Street if you're going to talk about a particular structure. Um, and it's my understanding by ordinance, um, please correct me if, if you think differently, but if it's a municipal lot, that includes the parking garage okay. and the parking structure. That was, the, my own, that was really my only question here. Okay, thank you. And then I, I, I recall what the original intent was, and it was kind of case specific. So I'm always wary when you legislate yeah. for a minuscule thing. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that um, I believe any other mayor doesn't have any opposition to this. But the words were temporarily altered fees. Shouldn't there be some kind of a fees in the collection of fees? Is it really talking about changing the collection of fees and the change in the fee structure? In other words, the manner of collecting. Is that what you mean? Well, the way you're talking about the breakdown of collection of fees, it may involve you need a different process to collect it, and the fees may be different. Just a thought here, because mm -hmm. that's kind of you, yeah. it was a two. The narrow thing that happened was a two-part right. process. It was posting someone taking cash, so you really, if you're going to do the cover it all, you should cover both. I think that would be fine. I'd also add, I, I agree with you, I think this should be an ordinance that covers us for potential situations in the future, not just be about a controversy which is over. So for example, if we replace some of the machines and some of the lots to accept credit cards, mm -hmm. um, which would be, I know that's an improvement that's planned. It's pending. Um, could, could, could this help in that situation if for a couple of days you had to have some kind of um, placeholder system to collect fees without those machines. For the lots. For the lots. Yeah. Um, well, the systems are uh, they're solar powered, so they should work continuously. So it's really the garages we're talking about. 
for the mechanical systems. Um, but uh, I'm into a broader discussion here. But we're just about ready to go out on the street with bids uh, for bids for a new system for the garage. So we'll see based on the specs that are written uh, what type of sort of backup and redundancy we have with the proposals we get to address this, this very situation. But during the replacement process, might there be a blackout period where you'd have to use some of There clearly will be. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully hopefully whatever we pass would cover us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Chief, the, the statute doesn't care how you get the fee, does it? I mean, do I, the, the, <coughs> the process of getting the money is not written in the law, I mean, is it? And if he does it by... Um, taking money out of my hand or taking money in the parking it's, machine or taking a credit card. If there's another episode not quite like this, that it, it's a collection process, the mayor should have the executive, I, in fact, I think he has the executive authority to act unilaterally without an ordinance. That's so right. allows him to act unilaterally as an executive officer. Which is why I voted against it. But anyhow, um, you, you'd want to cover all potential scenarios that could happen. I think part of the impetus was the fees weren't true fees. You know what I'm saying? There was a blanket fee that was attached because of a collection problem. So should you have collection problems, the mayor should change that. So the fee change as a result of whatever collection process he puts in place, making it easier and fairly You know what I'm saying? I just view one as an administrative method and the other as a as a something that is set by you know the council as to what your rate system is. Mm -hmm. Certainly propose an amendment to the amendment to no, I it was for be entirely appropriate. Purposes of discussion. Yeah. You know, you're you're the author of the amendment, so I didn't know if you could say that. Oh no, I consider it that. friendly if you had an improvement to it. Uh -huh. Um, any other thoughts? I should have just left it alone, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Your version is much more concise. Okay. Did, did we want to make an amendment to change the recommendation as, as um, council clerk suggested? To make it just upon the recommendation of the Transition Park Commission? Is that something we ought to do, or should we say that? Sure. It certainly shouldn't be from a councilor who's not here. Yes. It could be from one of the two of you, as well as Transition Park, if you want, but it shouldn't be. I'm, I'm content for it to be from the Commission alone, um, so I would entertain a motion to do that, to make that amendment to the amendment. So moved. Is there a second? I'll All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other? So that amendment is, is, is the amendment has gone through. Any other thoughts or ideas or, or concerns <coughs> about this amendment? We don't want to pass an ordinance that in any way is obstructive or difficult. We don't want to pass one that improves things. So. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> so we're, we're okay, you think? Good. Okay. okay. Any other thoughts? Or? Okay. Whether we can get rid of this by um, someone making a motion to um, approve the amendment. So moved. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. I'll take the personal as your first amendment. I'm, oh, come on. I'm voting no because I strongly believe the Chief Executive Officer has the authority to deal with contingencies on a case by case basis. And that, would be legislated, so I would vote no again. Any abstentions? Okay, so I think it passes um, with one no vote. Okay. Do you want to rewrite that? Rewrite, I'm sorry, rewrite. Rewrite the ordinance exactly as you want it? Yes, I think that's what, what I tried to do. In other words, this is the way it is. This is what you're amending. <coughs> Do you want to put that together and send it to me exactly the way you want it? 
I, I don't want to write it for you. Oh, if you want me to do that, that's fine. Yes. It's, it's just replacing this paragraph. Okay. Ship so, but I should rewrite it and send it to you. Yes. Okay. I see. Okay. Do we need to vote on the main ordinance again to recommend it to the city council? Since we've done this time. Okay. Uh, so now I'd accept a, uh, a motion to uh, recommend the ordinance as amended to city council. So. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. And with that, we're on to um, agenda item 15. Uh, Director Biden, presentation on shared car service. Do you want me to walk you through this memo or just go straight to the ordinance? And, uh, <clears throat> whatever you think is best. Um, so let me just give you sort of a quick version of this. Um, you all know that whatever city actions we do, we're, we're incentivizing something. So, you know, whether it's shared car, single occupancy cars, we're always incentivizing things. So we, in essence, subsidize our parking system and are subsidizing people having individual cars. We don't charge property tax for the, for the parking garage. We don't let, you know, you can you get four parking spots and put a coffee shop there with it. So we, you know, we divert space. We've got lots of grants for our parking system. So the question is sort of what are we what are we trying to, to encourage? The Sustainable Hampton Transportation Plan said as one of its its actions that we should encourage in shared car services. The, so Zipcar is the most common one we have in Northampton. Um, and the idea is shared car services save somewhere between each 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 shared car replaces ten to fifteen privately owned vehicles. So I use myself as an example. My wife and I own two cars. We're happy with two cars. My daughter suddenly gets a license and takes my car three days a week to go to college. And um, so I'm using Zipcar so I don't have to buy a third car. So take, in my case, it doesn't take a car off the road, but stops at the introduction of a third car to do. Um, and so we tried to get Zipcar <coughs> about nine years ago in Northampton. We talked to Zip a little bit, tried to understand what they were looking for. We did a survey uh, from our listservs and got a bunch of people who said that sign up for Zip. If we got a Zipcar in Northampton, we went, we approached Zipcar. At the time, they had the only business in town and who was doing this sort of work. And they said, we're only coming to Northampton if you guarantee, basically we're getting $40,000 a year of business. So we have to be guaranteed the cars would stay busy all the time. Um, and that wasn't a risk that we could do, so we couldn't get Zipcar here, even though our last plan called for that as well. When Smith College was building Ford Hall, um, they would have been required to build a parking garage of about 300 spaces, 350, I forget the exact number. We have a provision zoning where you can get a reduction in the number of parking spaces if you're showing an equivalent reduction in traffic demand, transportation demand. So zip car, and so Smith did a number of things. They raised the rates for faculty and staff parking the campus. They didn't put cash out. They built the parking lanes on Elm Street. They agreed to give the city an annual payment to support our park and ride lots, and they agreed to bring Zipcar to campus. So they brought, and they, they were interested in this in any way from a sustainability standpoint, but they were sort of using something they talked about with a real leveraging, saving them you know, a few million dollar building as a way to go forward the process. So they implemented all those things. They brought two cars to campus. The first year they had a guaranteed ridership. And then Zipcar, and I expect they paid money to Zip, but I don't know what the final outcome was. And then it became successful enough that Smith no longer needed to pay because the cars were paying for themselves. And they grew from two cars to, to six cars. Um, Zip's, been look, Zip's model has changed. They're now better capitalized than they were before. They're now interested. They were, for a while, they were only dealing with big cities. So they had an unsubsidized model for Boston, Cambridge, and New York, where they would just come to town bringing cars, and they take their own risk. And they assume they could make it pay. They, took, they were running the red for about 10 years, but eventually they started running the black. They would come to smaller markets like Northampton only if you had someone guaranteeing the service. And for the most part, if you look at Zip around the country, they're only in small markets at universities, because universities are subsidizing them. So they're now at Northampton, Amherst College, uh, UMass. I think they're at Hampshire, not Holyoke, but I'm not sure about that. Um, 
and those always began with university guarantees. Um, they're now looking at where do they think they can move to small market communities like Northampton, and they found a substantial number of people who use zip cars from Smith College campus, um, the, the number for Northampton is 31 percent, are not Smith College related. So they're not students, they're not faculty, they're not staff, they're people like me who are a member of Zipcar. Um, and so that's gotten them interested in doing what we asked them to do 10 years ago and come down, downtown. In, so their model in bigger cities for years was they required the free parking spot. Um, they've now, in some bigger cities, they're now saying we're successful enough, we've made it by, we can now actually pay for parking. In smaller market communities where it's still very marginal, they're not willing to pay for parking. You know, I mean, literally, if you're charging eight fifty an hour, you know, paying parking just suddenly makes the, the model not not workable when using the cars. So they're interested in coming to coming Northampton. The only subsidy, if it were, that they'd be asking for the city, is that we provide them free two two free parking spots. If they grow and successful, we we're talking a three year lease. If they grow and successful, <coughs> maybe in the three years we charge for parking. It may be they close their doors, and it may be that they pay for parking. That we'd all see in the future. For um, so that's sort of the background. There's two things on your package that I'm hoping. Yeah. Two things in package I'm hoping to talk about. The first one would be an ordinance, which would basically. Allow to basically say, you know, shared cars can replace you know, more privately owned cars, and it basically allow us not to charge for parking in the parking garage for shared car services. Um, that would just that would give one more quiver for the mayor. You could have shared spaces or not shared spaces. Um, and the second one would be the city council declare up to six spaces surplus in the parking garage. Um, for temporarily in surface in street parking, and then allow the mayor to sign a lease under terms that he negotiates for those spots. Um, so the six is, you know, right at this point, the only one that would really be successful in Hampton is Zipcar, because they already have six, ca six cars on campus. So these things are important as a network. You don't just want two cars. You want eight cars, so I can go to one spot. If there's no car available, I can go to somewhere else. Um, but the reason, so we think it would only be two cars for the foreseeable future. But the reason for putting the language in here is for six is we hope it changes. We hope enterprise does their own. We hope you know other people do their own. And and that you know if we went from zero seven years ago to six cars today to eight cars a year from now, maybe we can hand, get two new cars a year. That, that kind of thing. Um, and so this would would all. So my understanding um, is that Zipcar was purchased um, in 2013 by Avis. That's what lets them be more capitalized, take more marginal markets. That's correct. I think it was $500 million they were purchased for um, by Avis. So essentially, Zipcar that started out as this small, kind of innovative, um, somewhat kind of green focused, sustainability focused company is now owned by a multinational corporation um, that is trying to expand their market shares, you know, by going into smaller communities. So essentially what we're, you know, another way to frame this is we're offering two free parking spaces to a multinational corporation. Um, and I think that kind of shifts a little bit the, the concept around what we're trying to promote. And uh, I'm just concerned that there's going to be some pushback from the community. I've already talked yeah. to a few people in my ward, for instance, who it, this doesn't make sense to them because it's like offering to these you know, very wealthy multinational corporations free parking in Northampton because we have kind of a sub goal of, of you know, promoting sustainability and, and replacing you know, 50 cars and so yeah. forth. Um, so I'm just wondering how we need to think about that and talk about that. You know, what if Hertz does come forward and says, you gave, you know, Avis, our competitor, these places. We don't yet have a shared car service, but we want to free. I mean, how, how, how can that all work out? Yeah. Well, I guess a couple, maybe just three thoughts if I can. First is, I'm not trying to be an apologist for big corporations, but if they're making money doing good, I don't think that bothers me as long as they're, they're doing good. 
this is clearly a lost leader for them. I mean, clearly, you know, the reason I think Avis and, and Enterprise did the same thing, the reason several of these companies have bought out these, these other card share companies, is they're worried about losing their own business. And there's two real reasons. They're worried about losing their own business. This is the way the world is going. And the second is they think there's some synergies. Most of the rental car businesses use their cars Monday through Friday. Most of the shared car services are busiest on Saturday and Sunday. And so the model is potentially to flex cars back and forth. And it's already happening. You've seen some big markets. New York's doing this. You can get a car in New York and take it to LaGuardia Airport very inexpensively if you take it on Friday and bring it back on Sunday, because that's sort of how they're, they're shifting the cars back and forth. Um, but I guess I'm starting to think, I find they're trying to get market share, but it means that they're subsidizing something that's really important for producing car ownership. We see that people in the millennium generation own far fewer cars than people of my generation going through. Um, and so I, I, I think there's a, that service there. And, and I guess maybe my last point is, this is what I led with of, don't underestimate how much we're subsidizing single family, sing, single occupancy cars right now. So the same argument is we're subsidizing, you know, all the gas stations and all the car manufacturers by letting them park in our parking garage. It's basically costing us about $150 to $200 per parking spot for a lost property tax revenue. We put in the parking garage $9,000 of space that wasn't paid for by revenue. So we put a lot of subsidies into parking, and if one car can serve 15 families, our subsidy, even if we're not charging parking, is a lot less than if one car serves, serves one family out there. Um, when we had VHB, and this goes back to 2001, so I'm sure it's that day, do a, do a needs assessment of the city's parking system. We were short, I haven't looked and studied in a while, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 parking spots. So in theory, to meet the demand to make downtown vibrant, we should be building 300 more or less parking spots downtown at a cost of about $20,000 each. So when it doesn't bring revenue, it potentially reduces the amount of money we have to spend at some point on a new parking structure. You have to keep So, Wayne, just a question on logistics in the garage. Um, you and I talked a little bit about this, and I just heard about this in the article in the Gazette on Saturday, so I'm, I'm sort of digesting this. So, clearly you can work out the logistics of if the vehicle is parked in the garage, you know, we probably treat it as if we would do a permit holder system, where the card to get in and out of the garage is, is attached to the vehicle somehow. Um, so mechanically, it, it works. Uh, my question is, do the vehicles need to be in the garage, or could they be you know, in the roundhouse lot? Uh, because you're talking, on average, I just ran a number real quick, about $4,400 a year in parking per space, uh, $12 a day, 365 days a year. So $4,400 per, per spot. Uh, that you would lose to having a zip car. You know, roundhouse lot, a little different structure. Do they need to be undercover? Is that something that Avis requires? They don't need to be. They need to be centrally located and visible when the garage fits that. Okay. Um, and something that's not undercover is obviously a lot more complicated in the winter where they have to move the spots around during mm -hmm. the snowplow. So the garage is certainly very much favored. The Smith College is an example. So there are three cars, I think, in the parking garage. <coughs> But the other three cars are not in the parking garage, they're in the surface lot. So it's certainly doable with the preferences. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. We did talk to them about shifting the cars, so maybe out of the garage, not in the winter, in the garage in the winter. And they were just worried about people expect knowing where the cars are and not wanting changes. It's hard to make changes, so they prefer the cars where they are safe. They are, if you look at the Smith College parking garage, the, the spots are very visible, but they're also a fairly sharp turn. So like, you go to most garage, you can drive up the aisle and then turn into the parking spot. <clears throat> On Smith, at least for the first two, or first one spot anyway, it's a really sharp turn, so you're going in and backing out and going in. So you can give them not necessarily a prime spot, because they they tend to be compact cars. So it might be, you know, right after you go through one of the gates, there's a spot that's not mm -hmm. great for the right. So taking into account this, I think you're saying it's $4,400 per space that we would lose, right? Right. So the two spaces, so we're talking over $9,000 mm -hmm. a year. 
have we done kind of financials to really look at the cost benefit of this, especially taking into account that we're essentially giving free parking spaces to a very wealthy corporation? Uh, I mean, I think there are different ways to do this analysis, but I think all of that needs to be taken into account. And that nine thousand dollars is a lot to lose in the parking spaces too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ultimately, are we trying to bring the service here? I mean, you know, I don't think. Avis is going to subsidize the cars, so they're going to want to be convinced that there's at least a chance that it can work there um, And so that's why I see it less as being subsidized in a big corporation. And it's, it's been a goal for 10 years to try to bring a shared car service to town. At least a shared car service that is a successful membership itself. And is there no room for negotiation with them about, about the free spaces? There really isn't. So um, I don't think answer. We've asked them the the, um, the proposed order is not saying it's free. It's at no cost to the city and such other terms and conditions as the mayor finds reasonable. So that would be part of the mayor's due diligence process, is figure out what's there. And that may change as well. So I don't know the answer today. I certainly think someday they've paid it full freight. This would authorize him to figure out what those terms are. I just want to speak in favor of this. Uh, I used Zipcar myself. I helped bring it here almost 10 years ago to the colleges uh, through complex negotiations involving insurance, uh, riders for all the five colleges and so on. Um, I found it to be uh, effective. My family has only one car, and when that one car is out of commission or used by one member, we're able to use Zipcar. And uh, I don't think you mentioned, Wayne, one of the main advantages uh, is that um, People drive less when they depend on the car, so uh, it actually reduces congestion. It has so many benefits uh, for uh, specifically for downtown, but in general for the city. That I think those benefits far outweigh. And I have not myself done a detailed cost-benefit analysis, so I can't put a dollar on it. But my strong belief is that those benefits far outweigh uh, the value of that particular subsidy. And I agree that we're already subsidizing gas, uh, oil car manufacturers very, very significant. I think this actually, my guess is if we work out the numbers, this is actually far outweighing, the benefit far outweighs that particular cost. And so but I know other people as well who, who live in the downtown area and rely on the car and have no car at all. And this makes that more, more uh, attractive, more possible, more likely, easier for people to come and live and, uh, and spend their dollars in downtown uh, rather than uh, outlying areas, which means they're more likely to to do the uh, national average of six car trips a day, and a lot of those are to the mall. Instead, they do fewer trips, and uh, those trips are more likely to be local, and shopping is more likely to be local. So I think it's really good. Uh, how often those garages full? It depends, Alex. It depends on the, on the season. It depends yeah. on events going on downtown. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's constantly in, in, in flux. So is it, is it like full or it's still like half empty? I mean, I know it depends on it, but if it's, we give three spaces to a zip car, and if it's only half empty, usually half empty, we don't really use or lose money because we're just going to give three parking spaces that is empty anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, on the other hand, uh, if, we, if we're going to use zip cars, that's mean for each zip car, it's, I think you said 15 cars. So that's mean 15 cars not going to use garage. So that's mean the city is going to lose money for, for 15 cars. Is that the way I understood it? Well, except that we think we lose business downtown because people for a lot of very elastic trips drive downtown. If they can't find a parking spot, they drive out to the strip or go somewhere else. So, Freeing up spots in the garage may or may not help the city's revenue, but it certainly helps downtown restaurants who are losing customers because. Yeah, but I think Alex's point is that when you're calculating forty-four hundred dollars, you're using, you're saying the garage is full, and that's you're you're only able to calculate that if that spot would be paid for. Right, twenty-four seven. Right. right. 24-7 times 365, right. whereas in fact it's full maybe fewer than 10 days a year. Random, yes. Good comment.
the um, permit of uh, the garage permit system um, right now uh, we can go up to 175 um, permits um, I've scaled that back during the winter because of the lack of parking and the lack of the ability of people to get spaces inside of the garage even though they're paying $90 a month for these permits um, if we lose those spaces um, to the zip cars, although I agree that the zip car is a, is a very, very good idea, but if we lose those, um, we'll be losing um, on an average of, well, $540 a month from uh, potential leaseholders that could buy those cards. Um, and I also have at least a year and a half waiting list for people who want leaseholder permits. Um, so, as far as if you're looking at revenue, um, there's people out there who want the permit for leaseholder cards, and they're guaranteed they pay that money up front. Some of them will pay up to a year in advance, so you're guaranteed that revenue um, from the leaseholders. It's just something to put out there. For, you know. So you said $90 per month? They pay it right now $90 a month. So technically, if it's for a zip card, a card that's a little bit more than a thousand per year. It's ninety dollars per month. Well, except not necessarily because you're right. displacing a leaseholder, you may actually be freeing up some short-term parking. So you have to figure out what that part is. Right. You have uh, approximately seventy spaces, I believe it is, for mm -hmm. the leaseholders downstairs that are restricted to the leaseholders only, mm -hmm. and that's ninety-nine percent of the time that's full. And then they can overflow into the public parking area. But once they rotate out, then you have the ability for people to come in and to almost double pay for those spaces. Right. Thank you. I, I would just like to say I think having car sharing in Northampton is undeniably good. I, I share some of the concerns of Councilor Klein in terms of not wanting to give away the store. Um, in the same way, I, I get concerned sometimes when um, communities give large tips and tax breaks to incentivize businesses to come to town. Um, I always wonder if we really need to go to the full extent of the breaks that are ultimately offered. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that um, the mayor is, we're, we're not, we're not uh, limiting the power of the mayor in any way to, to, to charge if the mayor wants to establish a lease. So it, it's at some point in the future the mayor could in fact require these large companies to pay. Um, so that's just a, a general comment. I, I'd also ask, you know, why why is, is this ordinance written so that other locations besides the garage are temporary only? I mean, in theory, especially if we have um, demand for permits that generate revenue, you, you could put these cars elsewhere. They'd be in the weather and, and so on, but, you know, so is my car. You know. um, and is there any, any logic to striking the word temporary in order to do that? It's coming from my standpoint. I think we wrote this around a special zip, but you're right, somebody else could want a different spot. So that's a good point. Did you craft this? I did. Yeah. Any other discussion on, on this? So we are. We're being asked to vote on this ordinance and this order. Is that right tonight? That's what. So we start with you because I think you know this, but the rules of council are things that refer back to this committee that's transportation related unless it's initiated here. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to start here. So we we'll go to council, you refer it out, but it wouldn't have to come back to us in that process. We'd then just go to ordinance. So. And I. One other question for whoever is best to answer. The, the ordinance just authorizes the general power of the mayor to do this, and the order is setting the number, limiting it to six. That's correct. Do I understand that correctly? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> well, if anyone wants to say anything more about this or make a motion um, on either or both as a group, I assume we could do that as well. And I'd be happy to strike that on a temporary basis, that makes sense. I mean, I really wrote that sort of thinking about zip, but you're right, you're the other spots, makes sense. 
Um, whatever the pleasure of the, the commission is, it's also something we could discuss in, discuss in the full city council, whether that makes sense. Um, I'd be content to leave it in and just give it to the full city council. What others want to do. So. Yeah. And then we recommend to city council to approve an ordinance amended, uh, as amended for 312-36 parking meter locations and regulations. Is there a second? Second. Second. Do you also want to do the other order at the same time? And the, yes I do. Um, does it have a different number one? It doesn't have a number, so it's surplusing spaces and authorizing the mayor to lease them. In, including the order surplusing spaces and authorizing the mayor to negotiate. Is it, is it out of order to propose an amendment at this stage? Hmm? No. My question is, you know, what what is the what's the tradition about listing the names of corporate entities in our orders? I know they're just examples, but is that something where we, you know, it strikes me as it stands out to me as strange that in our we are passing an order, an order that has the word Zipcar, Hertz, Enterprise, and so on. I mean, don't we know what that means by the words shared vehicle services? I'm fine dropping them, just you know. Where I got these from is all the major ones that are out there. So we're trying not to discriminate between them, but it doesn't matter to me. But they concur. Okay. The um, drop. The drop. Them. Okay. So I make the motion in your second, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the motion is to strip out the names of those corporations by which the term, you know, is what we mean by the, the term shared vehicle services. Um, so, all those in favor? Can I that? just clarify, please? So, all right. So, when you said as amended, I meant to take out the temporary. On the temporary, okay. Oh, you're taking it out. Okay. I don't think you technically actually um, voted on the amendment. That's that's my concern. Sh shall we do that? Sure. Um, would you propose to? I, I I said as amended, but was that not? Oh. Well. I think you should have a vote on the amendment, then as amendment. Okay. Why don't we do it separately? So, so you move to... Yeah, I move the amend um, the ordinance to remove the words on a temporary basis. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. We have another motion to strip out the names of... Um, on the order. So is it okay to jump to the order? Mm -hmm. okay. So on the order, um, I, I guess I'll make a motion to remove within those parentheses from EG to car to go. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Extensions? Okay, thank you. So, so now this is amended. Both these are amended twice. And um, are we, do we have a main motion to, to recommend it out? Devin's motion is still active. Devin is still okay. And it's seconded? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all in favor of recommending this to the city council? Aye. 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 Oh, any opposed? Extensions. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, new business. Do we have any new business? I just have one item. Uh, there was a resident that wanted to uh, come to public comment tonight to speak about her neighborhood area. And I sent to her the traffic calming manual and application. She's going to fill that out, and I'm going to put that on the next agenda when I get it back from her. Great, thank you. Um, remind me, that was not a talk in Baker Hill. Baker Hill. Does <coughs> City Council accept Baker Hill yet? I haven't even accepted any of them yet. Okay. So I'm not sure if we can do a traffic calming on a street that's not a city street. I think the it lower part of Baker Hill is a city street. Oh. So to, I forget how far up it goes and then it becomes a private. Okay, fine. Right. Yep. That's our enforcement conundrum there is because Baker Hill is not accepted. It's the Baker Hill Road extension that's a kind of one. Ask me that he would know. That probably better. Motion adjourned. Second. 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 Second.